Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is part two of our CISO Assistant tutorial. Uh, so for those of you who are not familiar with this platform, this, in my opinion, is one of the best free GRC tools available, right? And you heard me right, free. So we are currently using the community edition of the platform and it's totally free to use forever. Right. And it does, you know, pretty much most of what you could do on some of the paid plans, except with this one. One of the kind of disadvantages is that you have to host it for yourself on your own virtual machine. But uh, really and truly, that's not really a big problem. You know, since most of us are kind of familiar with how virtual machines work. And in part one of the series, I showed you how to set up a virtual machine in DigitalOcean and how we installed uh, CISO Assistant on that virtual machine. You know, so for, feel free to check out part one of this series, you know, to see how we get CISO Assistant uh, set up, right? This, however, is part two, and in this part, we'll be looking specifically as, at how we can perform a risk assessment using CISO Assistant. So I'm currently logged into the console here, as you can see, and we could do a bunch of different things in CISO Assistant. As I say, it's your kind of a one-stop shop for uh, your GRC needs. I specifically will be concentrating on how to perform a risk assessment in this video, but I'm just kind of going to show you what are some of the other things we can do. So for the overview, you know, here we can see our analytics. Uh, this is kind of a summary of controls, you know, detect, protect, respond, all these things, you know, basically a part of the whole life cycle of GRC. I um, uh, We currently don't have anything right now here because this is a brand new install, but if we had data, it'd show up here in our summary tab. We also have a governance tab. We have a risk tab, compliance, uh, composer, right tab. As I said, data is pretty limited since it's a brand new install. Uh, moving on organization so if we have different organizations that we do grc for we could add them here right we also have projects so if we have diff different projects like the different uh organizations you know grc projects you know example compliance projects risk assessments etc we could add them here as well also have users and uh, i am the only user currently um uh, signed up on this uh, platform right now we also have user groups, as you can see, they have rule-based access, you know, so we can assign, uh, you know, rules based on what the user needs to do on the platform. And here we have assets where we can add our various assets to the platform as well. Um, for catalogs, we have frameworks. So if we hit on import frameworks, here we'd see some of the commonly used frameworks such as NIST, ISO, etc. And we simply click on this little button right there to import it to be used in our day-to-day um, -day, uh, affairs, right? Also, threats. We can add threats here as well. And we also have reference controls, which we can add here as well. Also, we can import mappings here. We have risk matrix matrices, as we can see that we can also import here. Currently, I have none loaded right now. I'll, I'll show you how we could do this shortly because we'll be going through a risk assessment where we need to import one of these matrices. All right, moving on on the operations tab. So we have applied controls. So this would apply to any controls that we have applied uh, to our various risks that we identified. We have a calendar. We have x-rays. So the x-rays would basically show us any errors or any data or thing that is missing from our current assessments and, and stuff like that. I'm um, moving on to the government sta governance tab. Again, we have various libraries here that we could import. We have policies that we could add, you know, just based on our organization. We could add various policies here. Risk assess acceptances. If we if we wanted to add a uh, risk assessment, we, risk acceptance, sorry, we could add that here. We also have risk assessments, and I'll show you. We'll be diving into this here shortly, since we'll be doing a uh, walkthrough of the risk assessment. Also have compliance, so any audits, we could add a new audit here as well. 
And we need to import some of these libraries that we identified earlier. That's why it's showing us these things are not available right now. Also evidences. Third parties, we have entities here. Uh, we have entity assessments. Represent. So this is, you know, like if we're working with third party auditors, etc., we could uh, give them access here and grant, uh, you know, add them here as well. Extras, we have inspect, backup, restore, settings, and experimental. So as I said, we want to focus specifically on how to perform our risk assessment using CISO Assistant. This is how I have been using it uh, in my experience with the tool, right? I've just been exclusively using it for risk assessments, but you know, by all means, free free to check out the various other options. I'll also leave a link for their GitHub page where they kind of give you uh, more documentation and information on how you could perform some of these other actions, right? So let's get started. So first off, we need to add an organization, right? Currently we have a global organization. This is here by default. So I want to add a new organization. So I'm going to add it, Joshua's Tech Tips. I'm going to hit Sales. All right. And next, what we need to do is add a project, right? Because we have our own organization, but we need to, we want to add a new project now, you know, that will be done by this organization. So to do that, I'm going to go to Projects, Add New Project. So let's name it Initial Risk Assessment 2024. All right, the domain is Joshua Stack Tips. This was the domain that we created earlier, and I'm just going to hit on C. All right, so here we can see the initial risk assessment project has been created. So the next thing we want to do is add a risk matrix, right? So to do that, I'm going to hit on catalog, and I'm going to hit on risk matrices. All right, we see we have none currently imported, so I'm going to hit import. And I'm just going to search for five by five. And this one that says critical risk matrix five by five, this is the one I'm going to be using. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to do a qualitative risk assessment for this demo. You know, as, as most of you are familiar with risk assessments, no, this is basically a subjective risk assessment just based on our own experience and expertise on the matter, right? So we're going to be using this matrix to perform that. So to import this, I'm going to hit on import there. And we can see the library has been successfully loaded. One more thing I want to add is the OWASP top 10. All right. So as we can see, OWASP top 10. And I'm going to hit on import there as well. All right. So we can see the risk matrix was successfully imported. So now that we've created that threat, what we want to do is we want to go down to risk and we want to add a new risk assessment, right? So I'm just going to name this or initial risk assessment 2024, All right? I'm going to leave it in this project. I'm going to put the status as in progress risk matrix. Uh, that's the critical five by five that we just created. Um, authors, I'm going to put my email address there. Um, for ETA, I'm going to select today's date and due date. I'm going to select one year from now. All right. Uh, I'm going to hit on save. So here we have our initial risk assessment, right? 0 0.1 has been created. What we want to do now is create a risk scenario, right? So this basically is uh, when we're creating our, when in our risk assessments, it's made up of a bunch of different scenarios, a bunch of different risks. You know, so this is one of the risk scenario that we are adding here, right? So we're going to hit on add risk scenario and I'm going to, Name this malware, right? And threat is 
malware that we just created. And I'm going to hit on save. All right. Okay. So there we can see this risk scenario was created. It's opened malware, threat is malware. All right. So what we want, we need to do now is to apply a control. So we have identified one of the risk scenarios is that of malware, which most organizations are affected by. So now that we have identified this, how are we going to respond to this? You know, what is our response to this risk? So to do that, I'm going to go to operations and hit on applied controls, right? So I'm going to hit on add applied control. So for malware, you know, a great tool to use to respond to malware is EDR, right? Endpoint detection and response. So that will be the control that we are implementing to deal with our, our malware in our organization. For category, this is a technical control. Status, this is active, right? The ETA, I'm going to put today's date. And for the expiry date, let's just say a year from today, right? So 21st, right? And let's just say the cost to implement this control is $5,000 for the year. And the domain would be Joshua's Tech Tips. And I'm going to hit on save. Right, so here we can see that EDR is active. It's an active control, applied control that we have added. So now that we have created this applied control, what we want to do is head back over to our risk scenario, the malware risk scenario. Uh, we want to hit on edit. All right, and what we want to do is go ahead and fill in some of the blanks here, right? So... Our current risk, right? Our current risk, uh, we want to change this to, and this would be just based on your experience and expertise here, since it's a qualitative an analysis we are doing. So I'm going to say the current probability of, uh, of our organization being infected by malware is medium. The impact, I'm going to say that would be high if it's infected by malware especially if we are talking about ransomware and some of these more sophisticated um, types of malware, right? For the applied control, right? Once we click there, we'd see EDR showed up, right? We just created EDR. So I'm going to hit that. That will be our um, applied control for this uh, risk, right, of malware. And the residual risk now, I would say... This could be, um, let's say, low, you know, and residual impact as low. Um, yeah, so what we want to do now is if we take a look at the overview, it kind of tells the story in terms of risk, right? Um, what we want, we could change this to mitigated, but it basically says this is the trap that was identified, malware was identified, we could also edit this and add assets, you know, if we wanted to. I didn't do any of that for uh, this uh, example, right? And we showed our current controls, which is none, and the risks that we have without our current controls. And it shows after applying the controls, such as EDR, this is our new risk, right? This is our residual risk, right? So I'm going to hit on save. And it said this, the risk scenario object has been successfully updated. So now if we look at our risk assessments, here we could see, you know, this is the risk assessment that we created. If we hit on that, we'll get an idea of where we, our current risk is at and what the residual risk would be after we have implemented the controls, you know, specifically EDR. So here we can see this is basically the five by five risk matrix that we imported from our library. And it shows us our current risk of medium, you know, the probability being medium and the impact being high. Uh, this is our current risk. But however, after implementing our applied controls, such as the EDR solution, this is the residual risk, you know, so this is the remaining risk after the co those controls were applied. So as we could see, probability is low. 
and impact would be low as well. Right? And that's just a look at how um, you know, the risk assessment currently looks. We could also export this if we wanted to. So if we hit export, we could export it to a PDF. Let me show you how that looks. Right, so this is, you know, how the PDF would look. And remember, this is just one risk scenario. Chances are we would have dozens or hundreds of thousands of different risk scenarios in our risk assessment, you know, just based on our organization um, size, right? And if we go to overview and analytics, here we can see some data now is being populated. You know, we have one active control, you know, our current risk and our residual risk etc. But yeah guys, in a nutshell, this is CISO uh, an assistant. You know, this is basically how you perform a risk assessment using CISO assistant. Um, you know, I really hope that you found this video useful. For me personally, I think this is one of the better GRC tools, uh, free GRC tools in my opinion. You know, so if you're really on a tight budget and you want to do GRC in your organization, uh, you want to move away from your Excel spreadsheets and you're looking for a cost-effective way to manage GRC, you know, CISO Assistant might just be the perfect tool for you. Also, if you currently do GRC in your organization, I'm interested in knowing what tools do you use, what tools and platforms do you use, and how do you think they stack up against something like this community edition of CISO Assistant? Let me know down in the comments below. And in closing, if you found any value in this video, you know, if you like things pertaining to cybersecurity, stuff like that, you know, if you haven't already, why not consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and hit on the notification bell so you'd be notified once a new video is released. As always, thanks again for viewing. See you soon.